Hey everybody, so I'm uh, in Hong Kong right now going for a walk. The reason I'm doing that is because I wasn't able to do that the last two days because you guys might have heard but there's major protests going in Hong Kong right now and the city is basically in, on lockdown for the past two days. Like all the trains were shut down, people just stayed home. So finally I can be outside now. So in this video, I'm gonna compare the cameras of the Huawei Mate 30 Pro and the OnePlus 7T against the iPhone 11 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy Fold. I figure these are the four probably most high profiled best phones right now, so might as well put them to a test. So my camera test differs from a lot of other camera tests out there in that you notice that most of the photos and videos I shoot will be in uh, pretty challenging situations like using wide angle camera at night or taking um, 10 times zoom or shooting a subject really, really close. The reason I do that is because, in my opinion, taking really uh, taking photos in really difficult situations is the only way to tell the difference between a really great camera and just a pretty good camera. I mean, a lot of these other camera tests, they take photos in the middle of the day with good sunlight of like a car. I mean, what's the point of that? To be honest, even a $200 Realme phone or a $150 Redmi phone can get a good photo in perfect lighting situation. So the second rule of my test is that um, all my photos are in complete point and shoot situations, meaning I just point the camera and I shoot. I don't try to dial down exposure. I don't go into settings and try to change uh, dynamic range and all that. The point is to test how smart the cameras are in finding balance like by itself. Like I don't want to have to make the changes. I'm taking the photos as if I was like a grandma, you know, like someone who don't know what they're doing, just a dummy point and shoot camera. And then after I take all the photos, I go back home, load all of them to my computer, and I examine them on my 40 inch Dell monitor. Okay, so for the first test, we'll start simple. This is a basic daytime shot. Notice that both the Mate 30 Pro and the Galaxy Fold punched up the contrast while the iPhone 11 Pro and the OnePlus 7T gave us more natural colors. Notice that Huawei and Samsung's image struggled with dynamic range a bit as the area at the bottom half of the photo appears a little bit dim. But then meanwhile, the iPhone 11 Pro overexposes the sky and the clouds. It's a little bit blown out. So in my opinion, I actually think the OnePlus 7T might have won this round. It's the best balanced image overall. It does not overexpose the sky and it does not underexpose the bottom half of the frame. Okay, now that was an easy test. Now let's move on to the second test, which becomes a lot more difficult. So this is a wide angle image captured at night. So as a lot of you guys already know, wide angle cameras traditionally struggles in low light conditions because, you know, the sensors are just not large enough. And on top of that, because the mobile sensors are so thin, th there's obviously lots of details around the corners of the frame. So the first thing you might notice here is that the Mate 30 Pro's wide angle camera doesn't go that wide at all. It's kind of disappointing actually, considering that the Mate 20 Pro and the P30 Pro had a wider field of vision. But look at how sharp and crisp that Mate 30 Pro image is. 40 megapixels with a larger sensor really do make a difference. Now the iPhone image looks a little bit soft, but it is very well balanced and with really accurate colors. Samsung's image is the widest field of vision, but you see there's barrel distortion. And OnePlus's wide angle image is just a mess, overexposing the lights inside that building. Now let's take a little bit of a closer look. This is where you see the iPhone's image is well balanced with accurate colors, but the details are very soft. And meanwhile, the Huawei Mate 30 Pro it's very, very sharp, but it overexposes the lights a little bit. The Galaxy Fold's details are solid, but still no match for the Mate 30 Pro. And the OnePlus 7T just completely loses right here. So now let's look at test three. This is a night mode image shot in a completely pitch black bedroom, my bedroom. So I actually did this test earlier this year, and the Huawei P30 Pro completely kicked the asses of the iPhone 10s and the Samsung Galaxy S10. So badly, in fact, that The Verge actually used my tweet in an article about how bad the iPhone XS's camera is in low light situation. But in a major surprise, Apple has caught up this year with the iPhone 11 Pro. Just check out these images right here. So right off the bat, you'll see that Samsung's night mode is trash. I don't know what ha went wrong with the Samsung night mode. I actually gave Samsung multiple chances. I took the photo three times and all three times it turned out a mess like this. The OnePlus 7T fares a little bit better, but that's still not a good night mode image. Obviously, 
this comes down to the Huawei Mate 30 Pro and the iPhone 11 Pro. So the iPhone 11 Pro has better white balance and more accurate colors. That's definitely how the room and the colors are supposed to look. But if you look closely, if you zoom in, you see that the Huawei Mate 30 Pro's image has sharper details. The iPhone 11 Pro's image actually has more noise. So uh, I don't really know who won this round because if you wanna talk details, like if you want a pixel peep, then obviously the Huawei Mate 30 Pro's image has a lot sharper details. But if you're just posting an image on Instagram of a night mode, then I think most people would say the iPhone 11 Pro's image is better. It looks cleaner. Okay, so this is the fourth test, bokeh portrait mode. So right here, I use my girlfriend as model and uh, she wasn't wearing any makeup that day. But the thing is, you can only tell if you're looking at the iPhone 11 Pro's image of her. That's because the iPhone, once again, keeps everything completely natural, everything realistic. Whereas Samsung and Huawei and OnePlus obviously apply some type of beauty filter. In fact, it feels like Huawei and Samsung applied a little bit of digital makeup on her. Alright, now you want to look at edge detection, then I think Apple and Samsung did the best job. Although the OnePlus 7T looks really good too. Huawei's edge detection is a little bit strong. It looks, you know, like she's pasted on. Now, as for which of these are the best portraits, if you go by accuracy, then the iPhone wins. But if you ask my girlfriend, she'll actually tell you she prefers the OnePlus 7T or the Samsung Galaxy Fold's portrait of her. So round five, bokeh images at night, this time with me as the model. Man, all four phones lost. All four of these images are terrible. Edge detection is poor, and just my face looks completely mushy and has no details. I, just, I guess software, I guess software bokeh effect is just um, not good enough right now to apply at night. You need really good lighting for that. So right now, all four of these images look bad, but the big loser here is actually me because I don't like shit in all four of these photos. All right, so round six, 10 times zoom. So this is not even close. As you can see here, the Huawei Mate 30 Pro's 10 times zoom is way, way more clear and crisp than the 10 times zoom on the other three phones. That shouldn't really be a surprise because Huawei phones have long had a better zoom system than the other phones. What's surprising here is that the Mate 30 Pro zoom is actually a step back from the P30 Pro. The Mate 30 Pro can only achieve, I think, three times loss of zoom and 30 times digital zoom, whereas the P30 Pro can do up to five times lossless and 50 times digital. But still, even with a step back for Huawei, it still easily beats the 10 times zooms of Samsung, OnePlus, and Apple. So test seven, macro images. So for this test, I basically try to get a picture as close to this cup of coffee as possible before it would lose focus. And as you can see, it's a clear win for the OnePlus 7T. Not surprising because the 7 is the only phone with an advertised macro mode. It's actually part of the wide-angle camera. Now, surprisingly, the Huawei Mate 20 Pro could do this trick last year, but this year, that trick disappeared from the Mate 30 Pro. I think it might be because the Mate 30 Pro's wide-angle sensor became a lot larger, so you can no longer make it do macro photography. Okay, now round eight, selfies. So first of all, you notice that I look kind of ugly in the iPhone 11 Pro selfies, like my fo my face looks bloated, my face looks fat, and my skin looks pretty bad. Now sadly for me, the iPhone 11 Pro is actually the most accurate depiction of my face. Both Huawei and Samsung clearly apply some sort of a face slimming, and on Samsung, it even smoothed out my skin so much that I don't look that natural. So again, it really depends on what you like. If you're good looking with perfect skin, you're gonna like the iPhone 11 Pro selfie camera. But if you're ugly, over bad skin, like me, you're gonna want to use Asian brand phones. So all four of these phones are pretty good in videos, but the iPhone is just on another level. It has the best stabilization and the best balance. On top of that, when you zoom in and out, meaning when you're switching between the wide angle lens and the standard lens and the telephoto lens, the iPhone 11 Pro can zoom in and out smoothly. Whereas on the Huawei Mate 30 Pro or the OnePlus 70 or the Galaxy Fold, you see there's a little bit of hiccup. There's a little bit of jerkiness going on when you're trying to switch between the lenses. And that's just what iPhone do so well. Everything just appears natural and smooth. Now all these videos are taken at night. If you move to nighttime videos, then the iPhone wins even more. You notice right here, the iPhone video just, 
is the most stable of the four. The other three suffers from micro jitteredness, while the iPhone is still relatively smooth. And obviously, the Huawei Mate 30 Pro is overexposing the lights too. Samsung Galaxy Fold video it turns out pretty nice too, pretty respectable. But ultimately, if shooting video is your priority, the iPhone 11 Pro wins big time. Okay, so that's about it. Okay, there's like some major argument going in the back. Everyone in Hong Kong is pissed right now. So anyway, that's about it for this video comparison between the four cameras. I'm not going to bother uh, declaring a winner. I'm not going to bother declaring a winner because every time I do that, someone jumps in the comments and accuses me of being paid off. You know, if I say the iPhone wins, Huawei fans are going to come in, they're mad. If I say Huawei wins, then Samsung fans come in and they're mad. So I just don't want to deal with it. You guys decide the winner for yourself. Meanwhile, let's look at this couple right here arguing really badly. Yeah, so everyone's stressed as hell in Hong Kong right now, man. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.